then if you're starting to notice that I get a lot of my stuff from Army Surplus. I guess um, my earliest inspirations for watching Ray Mears on TV, um, it always just looks so much fun. I grew up on a farm in Devon and uh, I had space to go out and um, you know mess around. But I had an old, um, like really old tent. I used to carry the fly sheet around with me like a tarp. Where I live, 30 or 40 miles away, you can still see Dartmoor. It just it looms over everything around here. Um, but I'd never been on it. Never interested me, I'm not gonna lie. And I had a film called The North Face, is what I watched. And then I started watching documentaries about it. And, and I just got hooked on this watching mountain videos. And it was really out of the blue. Trevor's like, oh, I, think, I think I wanna go hiking. I've been watching a lot of documentaries about mountains and I think I wanna walk up some mountains. But having known Trevor for as long as I have as well, and never having known him to be an outdoorsy person. Loves books, films, DVDs never been into exercise, physical fitness, you know, they're not things that you immediately think about when you think of Trev, so... I don't do any exercise. I need something else in my life. Me mate, Nate. Him over there. Does a lot of walking, so... Give him a call. Nate, take me for a walk. And then, that's what's happened. Previous experiences of going camping with friends is... Generally, I'm the one dragging them along and motivating them. Um, but this time round, I was like, okay, someone's approached me about it. I'm not gonna pass up on the opportunity. So, um, yeah, we gave it a go. There's Nathan, there's Moby, <whistles> Mobes. We're going hiking. This is it, rambling. What's that called, Nath? Salton. And where are we going to? I will aid. The I... highest point in southern England. And, um, the next step for the next highest point, you'd have to go all the way to Brecon in the south of Wales. Yeah, we started with High Willows. Seemed to be the you know the best place to start. I think that's the highest point in Dartmoor. I've always made films. I've loved. Always had a camcorder in my hand since I was about 12 years old. Um, so I wasn't going to go up there without filming it. I didn't really run it by Renee at first to see how he felt about that. <laughs> Just turned up with the camcorder and he embraced it. What have you got here, Dave? So, these are just a few items that I like to carry in my bag when, um, when I'm out walking. You never know what you're gonna need. Danger, don't touch any military debris. It may explode and kill you. That's exactly what it says on the sign right there. I remember the hardest part of that walk for me was the walk from the car to the gate that gets into the mall. And I remember getting to the top of that and I was out of breath. My legs was aching in places I didn't even know I had aches. And I thought, this is possibly a bad idea. So we explored quite a lot of the uh, mall that day. We saw High Willies, Yes Tour, Blacker Tour Cops. Uh, and it was just, it was beautiful. Got home, I thought, right, I'm gonna edit this. Posted up on our Hag Films channel. And then, um, Cranmere Pool came around. Uh, Trev pointed out that Cranmere Pool is possibly the furthest point in the UK or the southwest away from any road. So that's where we're headed. I picked a route following a riverbed, thinking that the ground level would be fairly consistent and sort of easy going and, easy to navigate. Well, the other week we had the uh, sort of mountainous views. We was up on the peaks and looking across and it's like lovely clear views. But I mean, look at this. Well, just every time you walk around a corner, it opens up into something else. It's amazing. We was hiking for a good four or five hours and we decided we'd stop for lunch. Worked out that we still had the same again to go before we got to Cranmere Pool. So it probably wasn't the most direct route to get there might have been a, a, an overestimation of our ability to hike that far in a day. Yeah, I mean, if it's the furthest place from any road, it's never going to be a, no, 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 a skip no. in the park, is it? Yeah, it was why, the most remote I think we've ever been on the moors. At that point, we hardly saw anyone. I didn't mind it so much, I quite enjoyed it. I mean, my interest in Dartmoor is just really being out 
and away from civilization. So for me, going somewhere bleak and off grid, away from people and seeing no one is what it's about. I think it was when we done Sort and the second time and Great Links was, which was our third time out at Dartmoor, was where it all started to gel for me. Yeah, got me that map, got my compass, buying me new new gear, got me new jacket, polarized sunglasses, hiking trousers. In between Cranberry Pool and Great Links, I'd like came up with the name Summit or Nothing, and I think the first time we ever shouted that on a tour was when we was on the Great Links. Route. That's the highest point of the day. Yeah. So that is the day's main summit. Yeah. More than nothing. Summit! More nothing! Uh, I don't think we shouted it on that at all. How did that feel? But, you know, that's become somewhat of a staple in our videos. Summit or nothing! Summit or nothing! Summit or nothing! Summit on up in! Summit on up in! Summit on up We really must come up with our own catchphrase, Tim. What shall it, what shall it be? <laughs> Any ideas? <laughs> and also, the, the filming element started to sort of step up a notch and that wasn't something that you know I was familiar with not not in that context anyway and I think sort of it was taking me a while to get my head around stopping uh, doing second takes or walking over ground we'd already walked over before uh, to get a shot from a different angle and sort of at first it was a bit frustrating but sort of now I think sort of looking back on it my head's much more in it and I like now having the diary that the memory being able to look back and see what we've done yeah and videos then started to take shape we need our own channel for this this needs to be separate tag films it was a slow burner we got it, and it didn't bother me lack of subscribers doesn't bother me at all i wouldn't say that the best suggestions we'll try on camera and then um give our thoughts thoughts back post our thoughts we'll give you a shout out by name. We're quite famous, you know, so that's a big deal. We have 15 <laughs> subscribers now. <laughs> We're two of them. <laughs> it's uh, it's for you good people, all 28 of you. Well, at the moment we've got 77 subscribers and out of those 77 subscribers we get two or three people leaving comment. Yeah. Come on you lot, you can do better than that. Yeah, well because not enough of you guys are subscribing, viewing. Uh, in the adverts. Yeah, in the, in the adverts. We, we have to work. Yeah, we still have to have other jobs, so we can't just do this all the time, so. Uh. <laughs> mm, we've done another one or two hikes on the North Moor, taking in sort of some really good scenery. Sorton is quite a abrupt introduction to Dartmoor. It's steep steep ascent right away up. It, you can walk around uh, a shallow route that is quite long so we just went straight up the front and then just when you think you get into the top there's like a full summit and then uh, and I think with the hangover it was um, painful. The next time we went out was at Oakhampton camp and um, the mist rolled in, we didn't know where we was, the compasses were reading all over the place. It was actually like getting towards the middle of summer at this point and it was the worst weather we've been in. It's frightening how you can lose your bearings. I realised then how dangerous dark or can be because there's points there where you're walking and you can't see 20 foot in front. All you can see is white all around you. Every now and then the mist would clear and the first tour that we picked, I think it was Bellstone maybe, and we were heading up it and then it just seemed that up could have been in any direction. So we were just sort of guesstimating. I don't know. Can't see anything. Can't see our next thing to take a bearing from. Or the next tour we were going to walk to. Winging a prayer, innit? That's how I live life, mate. Winging it. Winging it and praying. Whilst we were going up, I was very conscious that 
pretty much due south from where we were at any point was going to take us back to the river that we crossed and we'd be able to navigate from there. But I think sort of in my head I had that sort of safety, like, you know, worst case scenario, that's what we're going to do. I think Trev sort of was a bit concerned about the navigation. I started to lose a little bit, well not lose faith in Nave's judgement, but I was more wary of making mistakes. Um, it's out of my pussy. I don't know what to say really, it's the sort of thing that aggravates me. I mean he's come over the hill and he's just walked up to us and he's like, oh which way is Sticklepath? We've got a map and compass and we're struggling to navigate even though we are getting where we want to go. And I said, have you got a compass? He's like, no. And it's just like, what the fuck are you doing on top? By the time we'd done the Oakhampton camp, we'd started to get through quite a lot of turf on Dartmoor. At some point, I had booked Snowden in. So that was our next outing. We turned up at the car park for Snowden and we realised we didn't have any change for parking and it was just <laughs> typical of us and our adventure. What's it saying Trev? Five pounds. You got any change? Uh, my wallet's in the glove box. Right. One pound. We've got to go back for the pound. 20 yards away from the car park, Trev was already having doubts about how much kit was in his pack and wanting to turn around and pack a smaller bag and, and it was hot and it was still, it melted us the first, the first section of that really, really did and then it seemed to flatten out quite nicely and it was quite easy going and then all of a sudden you can see Snowden and you can see this tiny faint zigzag path leading up the side of it and it's like oh my god. That's actually, like, we're nowhere near the bottom of it. That's why it looks so small. Biggest mistakes we made that day was going up on a bank holiday. There are so many people here. It's fighting. I had the same idea as 50,000 other people today. Yeah, but look at it up there. It looks like ants over sugar, doesn't it? <laughs> Something, you know? yeah. I couldn't quite believe how busy it was. It was something else. Views were amazing. Um, the weather was kind to us, not so much the next day. You can't quite see the top because of the cloud, but that's Lord Trifan. This is where we are heading. So we were, you know, buzzing from actually going up our first real mountain, which was amazing. So the second day we were quite hyped and psyched for trying another one. So Trevor had been reading his book he'd bought on the Snowdonia National Park and uh, he'd said there was this other mountain called Triffin that he wanted to, wanted to hike. But I'd never heard of it, never seen it, knew nothing about it. So we looked through this book and there's a route and there's sort of words, you know, a description of the route and he was like, oh yeah, yeah, good. So I left it in the tent or in the car thinking, yeah, we don't need that. We spent so long on that mountain, in the mist, in the rain. We had a map and a compass, and then um, I was doing the navigating, and uh, there seemed to be a path cut out on the mountain, which was fine, so we started following that. We ran into this chap that told us, oh yeah, you go around here, blah, 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 and there's a nondescript boulder field, which, <clears throat> when you're taking advice from someone who sounds exactly like they know what they're doing, sounds like, oh yeah, it's brilliant, there's going to be a massive sign saying nondescript boulder field. We walked past 50 sets of stones that could be a nondescript boulder. I mean, I've got no idea to this day what a nondescript boulder field looks like. Maybe, Nathan, this is the nondescript boulder field. I think you could be right. I'd like to think you're right. I have no idea. I can't even remember what he said or what order they, all the things we're looking out for. Wall and a ladder. Gandalf the Grey. <laughs> the caves of Moria. Moria. Yeah. The mines of Moria, yeah. Sure. Shawshank Redemption. 
yeah, yeah. some old geezers. He said some guy was going to come up to us and say, if you need anything, he's a guy who can get things. Yeah. Great. And we ended up walking straight past the mountain, starting to edge up the next one. It wasn't for a couple of hikers we met there, showing us the way. Um, we'd probably still be there now. Unfortunately, this young couple just come wandering around the corner, so <laughs> just sort of, you know what, suck it up, ask them, because otherwise it's a bit wrong. So we asked them for directions and they helped us, which was nice. But yeah, they, it was kind of them to show us and they actually backtracked off their own route to should take us to where we needed to get, which was nice of them. They also pointed out which berries were edible. So I don't think they had a lot of faith in us <laughs> finding our way off of that mountain. But anyway, we, we, got, we got to the top of the mountain just about and then sort of discovered we weren't. Okay, confession time. So we've had our coffee, our celebratory drink, a bit premature. The longer we've been sat here, you can hear more voices over there. Every now and again the mist here fades and you can see like a shark fin sort of shape. That's the summit, not where we are. Then we had to climb for another, it must have been the best part of an hour to get up to the next summit. Um, by this time, by the time we got up there, I just wanted to get off that fucking mountain. <laughs> uh, on the way down, the weather had sort of cleared. Not fully, but enough for us to see the bottom of the valley. And we just kind of looked down this really steep incline covered with loose shillet and stone and just sort of basically dived down the face of a mountain. And we turned up at the campsite and the bloke's like, Have a good time, yeah, where have you been? Oh, we've been to Triffin. Oh yeah, dangerous mountain there, you see people die on that all the time. <laughs> oh, thanks mate. <laughs> but it was on the way down from Triffin where I made the trailer for our channel. Why should you subscribe? Summit or nothing. We're not your Ray Mears type. Loads of experience. Oh, fucking compass. I think we need to assume this is Bellstone. You know what they say about assume? It's the mother of all fuck ups. Um, because by then we'd we got lost in the mist twice. The microphone we'd been using the day before hadn't worked. All these things, it's like, this is us, this is what we are. I've got to be honest, the trailer for the Summit and Nothing channel is something I've probably watched 50, 60 times. It creases me up every time I watch it. The trailer just made itself. Say no more. We are Summit or Nothing, and you need to like, comment, subscribe to see our hapless adventures. So after uh, our trip to Snowden and Triffin, there was a bit of a pause between sort of that and going again. And I think we'd sort of, we had other commitments, so we didn't really go out again for a while. I think it was October the next time we went out. So we had August, September, and then into October. And we went out and we took a friend with us, John. Yeah, yeah. visit with us this week. John, he's helping us out. It's Jan. He's going to be doing our map reading. Because <laughs> we get lost. Yeah. Who didn't want to be filmed. I couldn't really see how that was going to work because we was filming everything. I was awful, really. I just ignored him. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm glad he did because he's bad huh? with our banter. He's, you know, it was a good day. Got winter jacket on every pooch. Oh, very fetching. Bad pun of the day, Ward. That was good, Jonathan Davis. The swarm of people that seemed to be here a minute ago fucked off. It's once again nice and peaceful. Oh no, no, there's some fucking geezer or woman carrying a baby. Sweet. If you want to go somewhere with no people on a Sunday, it's probably best to go to church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever happened, he was a great sport about it, and to be honest with you, it was really nice to relinquish the responsibility of navigating to someone that knew what they were doing, because um, he, was, he was much more on it than I was. And somewhere along the line on this hike, we came to the bottom of a valley where we knew there was going to be a river, and there was quite a 
dense area of greenery, shrubs, trees, bushes and whatnot between us and where we wanted to be. And um, again, without thinking, I decided to start leading the way and uh, we ended up lost for what seemed like forever in a seven foot high forest of ferns. We were all good in the wood. We got to the river, rump got across the river, I swung across the rope, and then all of a sudden I'm out in front again, and now here we are, stuck in the middle of a load of fucking ferns. At the end of the video, Nathan's a bit subdued. Someone even commented, oh, Nathan doesn't seem himself in this video. <laughs> and I'm thinking, yeah, I think it's just because he's uh, beating himself up for leading us through this <laughs> fucking shit terrain. Well, you know, every time we go out, I do wonder how on earth we're going to unintentionally fuck things up again. No, I think we've done it in fine style this time, haven't we? You know, we really <laughs> set a new standard and fucking it up. Pretty happy with that. But it was a great day, it was different. Um, it was lovely to see some different areas uh, and we we're still hacking off more, more squares. Then we didn't go out then from October until the new year. Sort of work commitments, and um, it was the build up to Christmas. We'd done a nice little hike around Barbator Reservoir. It was a nice, crisp day. Um, not warm, but it wasn't raining, it wasn't sleeting, it wasn't cold. Um, and it was the navigation was easy going around the outside of the reservoir. We deviated through some woodland and went up a tour. Uh, when we got to the top, there was still snow on top. It was a nice day. It was nice and easy. It was a nice stroll. Good to get back out, have a bit of banter. And the, the thing with these reservoirs is they're quite sort of built up areas. My sort of love of the North War is the bleakness of it. So quite often when we go to other places now, uh, you know, I'm sort of trying to enjoy the fact that there are other people enjoying the more than going to share. <laughs> so Trent tells me. Not a fan of people. Fell running. That's what people do not. With a toddler. And then we found Sheep's Tour, I think. Really beautiful place. Had great, great fun. Really enjoyed it. And sort of, uh, it reinvigorated us for getting back on in the new year. And we sort of decided then we were going to go once a month, regardless of what we were doing. The next time we went out, we'd had a request. We've had a request from one of our viewers. George Post. Hello George. So here we are George, we're going to find the Twin Falls at Benford Reservoir. Printed out some instructions to find it because I couldn't see it on the map. So yeah, let's go find the Twin Falls of Benford Reservoir. But of course we end up walking for miles in the wrong direction. <laughs> All good fun. That's what we're here for, having fun. It would be boring if we found it straight away, wouldn't it? We walked for hours <laughs> through woods, down steep banks, up and down this massive river looking for these waterfalls. Uh, we found it eventually. We could have found it in 20 minutes from the car, but instead we walked for hours. We had to drag it out. We had to give you at least six episodes to watch. We'd driven through the Merryvale area, so we ended up going back to Merryvale and going up to the top of King's Tor just for a spot to eat before we went home. We went, ended up going through the Merivale part of the moors and sort of decided that that was where the first wild camp was going to be. So now we're camping. In my head, this was a little bit sort of, this would be make or break for Trev. Because my, my hiking had always been geared to sort of the overnight camp. I don't know if Trev had actually wild camped before or anywhere as remote. What I hate about camping, well I've never really been interested in it. The camping was good fun, but it's trying to fit everything back in your bag in the morning. When it's, <laughs> it's, when it's pissing down with rain and you've got to take your tent down. So that's the sort of thing I'm looking forward to, isn't it Mike? Uh, we took in some tours. It wasn't that eventful, it wasn't that much of a summit or nothing, nothing went particularly wrong on that. We saw some antiquities, um, we got up to Great Mist Tour, that was a climb. We decided to sort of 
camp quite close to the car. I say quite close, about 20, 20 minute, 15 minute hike. So by the time we got up, set our tent, six o'clock, it was dark. Didn't have anything to do. <laughs> well, here it's B. Two men and a dog in a tent. <laughs> it's not even six o'clock in the evening. Yeah. I might have a little bit of Wi-Fi, uh, 3G, so maybe we can... Watch some Game of Thrones. At this point, since Christmas, I've actually been on a diet that I'd sort of made up myself to try and lose some of the winter pounds. It was having a bit of an adverse effect. What has transpired is I've got terrible gas. So, uh, it's what raining out. <laughs> and it's raining, so everything's sealed up. So what we're doing is using my vape to uh, counteract the stench. I feel for Trev because it, it was, yeah, it was vital. Uh, it was horrendous. This, I mean, it was, you, you couldn't explain it. <laughs> it was disgusting. But, I, you know, I mean, Trev had to put up with it for one night. I mean, I lived with it 24-7 for months. But uh, mm -hmm. in the morning, I managed to get a nice shot. Some uh, time lapsing of the mist before the mist really come in. But by then, yeah, I'd enjoyed it. I was like, I want to do another hike and another camp. We both seemed really upbeat, which was positive because, you know, I think sort of I was really excited about starting to do the camping side of things and sort of whether we'd go again or not. Um, prior to that, we'd made a kit video, our first ever kit video, sort of discussing what we were going to take which I think was a good thing because some people, you know, made some good, useful comments. Uh, we completely ignored all of them and then decided to make our kit up again for the second one. Carried even more weight. There were a few comments uh, that, you know, we should be looking at like maybe a fifth of our body weight. So uh, what we've done is we've taken all of that on board and I don't know if you can see, but um, we've put a lot more stuff in our packs and made them bigger and heavier. Yeah, bursting um, at the fucking seams. So uh, we've done the complete reversal. <laughs> it wasn't really intentional, no. um, but this seems to have happened. Yeah, we'd really balls that up and ended up carrying far too much, far too much weight. And that was, it was a painful hike. We're both feeling a bit battered from the day. Trev's pack has been awkward on his back. My left shoulder's given me grief. I've got sort of rubbing going on on my hips. I decided to sleep under a tarp at this point. He's going down the Bear Grylls route now, doing his tarping. So I thought I'd come up with something ingenious using the hiking poles to set the tarp up, only to come back and find an infinite sort of resource on YouTube of people setting up tarps with hiking poles. In actual fact, you can buy tents that use hiking poles as the tent poles. This has been a nice and uneventful walk as well. That wasn't really a summit or nothing experience. I bought another book, um, John L's Walking on Dartmoor. I'd just like to say, Walking on Dartmoor by John L. What a brilliant publication. It was nice because it was telling us things about the moor that we wouldn't have known, we wouldn't have seen necessarily of our own. It features heavily in our video. At the beginning of this book, John L's book, there's this interesting bit where it tells you about how Dartmoor is formed. So I read that, I posted that up online. Yeah, the Devonian period occurred 400 million years ago and lasted about 50 million years. Well, the first comments I got on that video was someone saying, did you know that John Earl has just been arrested for historical sex offence? Yeah, so that's how we monumentally fucked that up. I think at one point, in that video, for other reasons than his interesting kids, I had actually called him a cunt. It turns out he is. So, John, you're a. Is that right? Is that okay? But by this point, now we are learning. We're buying better gear. We've uh, seen some views. We're learning more about the moors. We're learning more about the. The gear that we're using. It's the first year we've done this and from day one till today 365 we've covered some territory so I think the next year you know we're going to step it up a notch. We're getting a bit more professional in a sense. We've got another overnight camp coming up um, and then beyond that I think the next sort of hike after that is Scarfall Pike and that's what 
fuel level was the interesting guy that met. I'm really looking forward to seeing where that goes and seeing what the next year of Summit or Nothing brings. And hopefully within the next 12 months we'll be close to, if not back from Ben Lewis, which is, uh, you know, at the moment that's our main target. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it.